all over the world. Before starting, I I like to uh, give my deep condolences to all the frontline uh, fighter who died in uh, 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 this uh, corona fight. Uh, we really we are very sorry for those who leave, uh, uh, left us and lost uh, their life. Uh, we are praying to God uh, for their departed soul and also praying uh, to their uh, relatives to at least bear the pain and so that uh, time will come they can uh, normalize their psychological trauma. Uh, uh, even nothing actually stopped, uh, everything is going on. There is an alternate way to, uh, of learning is through this uh, 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 webinar session organized by uh, mm, uh, this uh, IPID and uh, especially Wadud and uh, Mohsin, they are doing a wonderful job. Uh, as usual, actually, the, my talk was uh, very basic of technique and tips of uh, coronary angiogram or in other way you can say it, how to do a perfect angiogram. Actually, this was my uh, most uh, uh, most uh, favored topics because uh, uh, I have seen uh, that if the angiogram has not been done perfectly, a lot many things can be changed. So I have prepared a lecture on uh, on the the topics that actually not for the uh, beginner or uh, cardiology, uh, uh, not for the, um, only for the um, postgraduate student, but also for those who just passed and uh, trying to make uh, the career in intervention cardiology. So this is my opportunity to share my experience to those who uh, uh, are going to be in, uh, cardiologist and also uh, those who are already in the field trying to learn something. Uh, so maybe maybe some part of this lecture may not be useful for those uh, 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 postgraduate students, but in my mind, if you can at least grip these things, 10% of this, at least in some time in your life, you may get some uh, benefit out of this uh, because what mind does not know, I cannot see. So I want to just open up the eyes uh, in, in uh, making a perfect uh, angiogram. Uh, let us start with a uh, history like uh, uh, Mr. X, uh, 60 years old, diabetic pleasant gentleman admitted in my hospital for elective PCI to LED. He has been treated uh, for his unstable angina in another hospital. The diagnostic angiogram shows critical lesion in LED and was planned for PCI to LED. This is my normal practice actually to do all outside angiogram, for repeat angiogram before doing uh, uh, proceeding for the angioplasty. So part of that, I did the angiogram. You will see that this is the angiogram that I saw in my chamber, you are, what you are seeing, there is a non-critical lesion in the proximal uh, mid LED, and there is a slow uh, feeling of the distal PDA. Uh, it could be something ear embolism or something like that. It's not, or maybe in block, or thrombus, whatever it is. This is like this. In other view, uh, you can see the the LED proximal is there is the eccentric haziness. Uh, but here the PDA is well visualized. So probably that C angiogram was because of some embolism of the ear that at least to complete cutoff of distal PDA. But this view it shows a little bit of uh, eccentric black whiteness uh, at the proximal LED. So I did a repeat angiogram. Uh, uh, by giving uh, uh, this was the angiogram actually I'm not seeing anything here proximal LED is perfect 
mediality is also perfect. There is nothing in the PDA. So actually what, what I have seen in this angiogram in my chamber, you see the catheter is deeply engaged within the coronary artery. Probably that initiate uh, the spasm or uh, some form of air embolism leads to this sort of scenario. Uh, then I ask to the patient that you don't need anything, the medicine will be enough. But there is two, two more things here I have to think about. The patient came all the way from the Boxer's Bazaar with his two relatives selling his land to borrow some money to do the endoplasties. Although he was very happy that he don't need anything, but he may not get that land back. So the moral of this thing is that if that angiogram Sir, can I has been done you? perfectly. Uh, sure. Can I interrupt you? Sure. They, are saying they are not able to see the slides. The screen is blank. Some of screen the is blank. Yeah. One, the guy, uh, Parakarki from Kathmandu has written, the screen is uh, blank. Are you, are, you, are you seeing? Are you seeing? I'll have to check. Para, uh, I'll have to call him and say he has written. He cannot see. Uh, but he, we are seeing uh, it quite well. Uh, the the uh, movie you are seeing? I'm seeing. So maybe there's something wrong there. We are seeing. What do you think? Quite okay. If if what do you, are you seeing it? Yeah, quite well. Oh, quite well. Okay, maybe that is a local problem. So the two of the uh, guys cannot see. One is Parag and one is Samir. I'm and not sure guys, about. I'm not sure what happened. Sure if can somebody is seeing, you? somebody is not seeing. I what is wrong? So there's a in the chat. They have said I'm also not oh. seeing. Samir Powdell and Parag Kharki is saying he cannot see. Rest of the other guys can see. I don't know why. Aira, sir. Sir, we can oh. see, sir. Yes, yeah, some can see, some cannot see. Like, uh, uh, some the thing is that if that angiogram been done perfectly, there is no re no need to come all the way from Boxer's Bazaar to here, and that is the reason I want to actually uh, want to give more emphasis on doing a perfect angiogram. Uh, before just going uh, on the the main talk, just let me have some. Uh, something about the one of the image modalities of uh, diagnosing coronary artery disease. Uh, number one is the coronary angiogram, as you know, but it is the luminogram. It is not truly uh, angiogram. It is an arteriogram. Uh, uh, you can. It is not arteriogram. It's a luminogram. You are seeing the lumen. There are other modalities like intravascular ultrasound, and uh, that actually uh, give uh, information about the length of the disease. Person is stenosis, black burden, then virtual histology, calcification, and sometimes stain expansion and uh, stain position. It can help. There is another uh, modality is called fractional flow reserve. It is sometimes we use to see the physiological significance of the lesion, which is in the gray zone, like some say 60%, some say 70%. So these are the patients who will be much benefited with this. Uh, uh, physiological uh, um, um, significance of the uh, blockage by what we call fractional flow reserve. Another is the OCT, which is similar of endoscopic ultrasound. And finally, the angioscope. Direct visualization is mostly theoretical and also in, uh, I have not done, I have not seen even. So a little bit about the anatomy uh, for those, I know the recapitulation of your previous knowledge in the second year and also part one and so on. The coronary circulation, actually, we see the epicardial coronary arteries. Mm -hmm. That is the art branch of the ascending aorta. It runs perpendicularly, penetrates in the myocardium. Slowly, it will gradually reduce its size to become arteriole, capillary, venule, vein. And then in the coronary sinus, ultimately right atrium. There are the two branches mainly. Right coronary artery originates from the right coronary sinus, passing along the right border up to the cracks where it divides into PDA and PLV, and other branches, coronal branch and marginal branch, acute marginal. Similarly, the left coronary artery originates from the left aortic sinus, 
divide into LED and LCX. LED has got diagonal and septal valves. Septal valves are perpendicularly penetrate the market and diagonal is a diagonally placed. Some of them are two to four in number. And circumflex has got obtuse marginal branch, it is also two to four in number. Sometimes the PDA arises from the le le uh, left circumflex, then we call the uh, left dominant system. Uh, if you go back to the history, actually, the selective angiogram, it was an accidental outcome of uh, non-selective uh, root autography done in 19. <coughs> They were trying to visualize the coronary artery in a patient with valvular heart disease before surgery. But accidentally, the catheter entered the right coronary artery, as you've seen on the uh, right side. This was the, that, that angiogram first detected as a selective angiogram. From there, then uh, uh, Judkins and others make a pre-shaped catheter selected for the right coronary and also for the left coronary. So history is like that. It was an accidental outcome of a non-selective angiogram. Now come to the angiogram. What it is? It's the X-ray image of blood vessel after they are filled with contrast matrix. It's the gold standard to evaluate the coronary artery diseases and usually identify the exact location, severity of coronary arteries. What do we usually see? We look for the origin its branch, its distribution, and also identify the exact location, extent, and severity of the disease or stenosis. We also assess the TME flow and also need to view the retrograde supply by the collaterals in a totally occluded contralateral vessel. This is important Hello? from a therapeutic point of view because diagnosis, not all you need. You also need to guide the therapeutic intervention. So nowadays, a lot of CTO patients we are getting. If you don't see the retrograde collateral, we cannot plan what to do for them. And also assess the intra or extra luminal calcification. Now, what are the indications? So commonly, as it is a coronary artery, so coronary artery disease like in the form of arsenal angina, non-STMI, STMI. Sometimes the patient resuscitated after cardiac, after cardiac arrest different types of cardiomyopathy to rule out coronary artery disease and sometimes chest pain evaluation in undetermined cases in high risk population. Sometimes it has been done in a patient with congenital heart disease or in the valvular heart disease. Say for example, if a children have got tetralogy fellow and if we don't do angiogram and if we don't guide the surgeon about the right coronary artery or circumflex artery, its location, and if it crosses the RVOT, where the surgeon may need to augment that RVOT by patch augmentation, accidentally may cut the coronary artery. That is the reason we do some congenital heart disease angiogram to guide the surgeon. Same with the valvular heart disease before valve replacement, especially in male above 45 and female above 55. And common access, although nowadays is the radial is the majority of the cases, but you also need to know other route like brachial, femoral. Initially, we uh, it was done by brachial, then it came to femoral. Although femoral is usually quick and easier, you can take change multiple catheter, but difficult in iliofemoral diseases and there's a complication is much high. Contrary to that, the radial recently it been switched. Most of the interventionists, most of the cardiologists now switch to radial because it is early mobilization, less complication, and it's the patient comfort. Now, what are the angiogram, uh, the step, like preparation of the patient, the vascular access, intubation of the coronary ostium, dye injection, cine filming, and seal the punctures. And one by one, I'm going to talk about what is the preparation of the patient. Preparation of the patient is very important. The reason is this. It is not that uh, the may have writing a prescription, you need angiogram. You need to proper counseling of the patient. This is the most important thing that I, I, I know. If we consider this angiogram 20 years back, it was very difficult 
to convince the people for the angiogram because the angiogram is not simple thing it has got its own risk it has got the mortality what about the percentage so people who are scared about the angiogram and many patients that time don't do procedure here in bangladesh they used to go near the country where they get treatment. and we need especially the new generation cardiologists need to give more emphasis on the counseling because you need to convince the patient need to get confidence of the patient initially the people used to go to nearby country but now the the patient are coming to dhaka but not all cardiologists will practice in dhaka some are practicing outside so outside dhaka so you need to counsel the patient at least spend 10 15 minutes with the patient about the procedure how it has been done and how much blood is needed how much uh, uh, painful it is what is the step of the procedure you can show it through a youtube animation of the procedure to get confidence of the patient so that is most important is the counseling next thing is that it should take an informed consent of the patient after counseling you should explain everything and patient will be convinced and they will give a consent yes i am ready to do this procedure next you should check some uh, blood test coagulation profile renal function before starting the procedure they also examine the patient to look for the peripheral pulses also see the drugs what he is getting and also check the vitals like pulse blood pressure and spo2 you don't need to check yourself you will ask your sister to do this job there should be a clean shaving at the subpuncture side patient usually will fasting for at least four hours because some dye sometimes causes vomiting and, and that may lead to aspiration to avoid these things you uh, need to be uh, uh, saying the patient about the fasting some patients are uh, a little bit anxious so they may need uh, some uh, tranquilizer next step is the puncture side uh, now uh, as i said uh, the puncture side commonly the radial but you also should know the femoral uh, in, in this connection, I want to uh, say one story like, say, 15 years back, 20 years back, uh, our general surgeon do gallstone operation by opening the abdomen. But after coming the, uh, the laparoscopic surgery, who only uh, know how to do laparoscopic cholecystectomy. And at least 5 to 10% of the patient may need to open the abdomen laparoscopy was not possible then what they did they make a standby surgeon in the OT to help them to in a bailout situation uh, in in angiogram you may not ask some other and femoral intervention to be in cath lab to bail him out that's the reason you need to know both femoral and radial puncture femoral puncture usually it is done uh, between the intrapicastic artery and profunda over the head of the femur, usually at the junction of medial one third and lateral two third. This is the uh, scenario. And if you show, this is the procedure alcohol injection. You just take a 20, uh, uh, 18 gauze uh, cannula, straight away puncture the interior wall. Once the lumen, the, the cannula is in the uh, vessel, there will be a jet of the blood. And remove the cannula, you see there is a jet of blood means the free flow of blood then introduce the short wire you should keep your uh, left arm on the groin side don't remove it then make a small rent then introduce the uh, introducing sheet over the wire so once it enters into the artery then you remove your left arm so that will reduce the chances of hematoma at the puncture side uh, uh, similarly, you can do it with the guidance of fluoroscopy. This is the head of the femur. You see the lateral one third and medial two third. You'll see there is a free flow of blood, and if you push the wire, it will go for the opposite side. Means that it is in the aorta. Similarly, the radial artery, here you need to puncture both walls. So, what you do, the maximum pulsation, about two centimeters uh, proximal to the distal end. They remove the trocar. You'll see the trick of blood is in the cannula. Then 
as you have crossed the opposite wall, so slowly withdraw and the wire in position. Once the blood is coming free, you see the red means that it is within the lumen. Then introduce the wire. The rest part is same as the introduction of femoral sheet. And in my hospital, I make an arrangement of uh, doing radial in a way. You see here, the patient is sitting in the uh, couch. There is a black um, uh, there's a curtain. This is the trolley of sheet, two cc string, cannula, and fluid, heparinized fluid. And here, uh, my uh, junior, he is, she is puncturing the radial artery. And with this, I just do all the preparation for cannulation. All the patients here, the eight patients are sitting, seeing the television. Some of them can read the book. And everybody has got cannula in the radial artery. The benefit of this is that the major work is done. Then one by one, you, you just take the patient in the lab and do, do, do the procedure. If you have got two or three labs, the eight patient will take only half an hour to finish the job. This is the one way you can cut short the time. So after accessing the coronary artery, the next portion comes the engagement of the ostium with proper diagnostic catheter. Keep in mind that tip of the catheter should fit coaxially with the ostium. Otherwise, there will be more sinus flush and small dye will get, enter into the coronary and, and it will not visualize properly. So to identify the size of the catheter, you need to see the aorta. In femoral approach, the aortic extra chest is very important because this is the normal X-ray with normal aortic arch. Here you can take 3.5 for left and right is enough. You don't need a second uh, carb catheter, 3.5 is enough. But sometimes this is a, a 3.5 catheter, just push it. All you need to just push it, it will enter in the ostium of the left coronary. You see, I have not manipulated anything. Just remove the wire, push the guiding cath uh, the diagnostic catheter, it will sit in the coronary artery. But sometimes, the same way, take a different view with the uh, uh, left or right catheter. Sometimes, the aorta is dilated. It's because of dilated ascending aorta, especially in elderly people with endoscopy changes, aneurysm of the ascending aorta. Here, you may not cannulate uh, coaxially with the catheter what you have taken early with a 3.5. Or sometimes here, the unfolded aorta means that open up aorta. Here also, the same 3.5 catheter may not fit nicely with the coronary. Say, for example, on the left side, this is the dilated aorta. You see, the catheter was not coaxially placed. It is hitting at the lateral wall of the ostium. But if you take a four guiding catheter, JL4, it will fit coaxially. So it has got an advantage of that. If there is anything in the ostium, you can easily avoid unnecessary dissection of the proximity plate and ostium. So just to avoid these things, too much manipulation, you should take the right catheter for this sort of patient with the dilated toe. Sometimes the uh, location of the coronary artery may not be in, in a place where it's actually usual. Say for example, this is the situation, the coronary artery, the left coronary artery, it appears to originate a little bit higher. You are not seeing the circumflex. So here, if you take 3.5, it will also not fit. So here, what you will do, it will need a one size smaller catheter, like three cards. That will fit nicely, coaxially. And if you see on the portal view, the nicely coaxially placed. Similarly, sometimes the coronary artery <coughs> may arise, uh, left coronary artery may arise separately circumflex and LED in the separate origin. In that case, yes, you can do uh, with a single catheter by little manipulation of clockwise rotation to LED and anti-clockwise rotation, circumflex. Or in other way, take 3.5 for LED and take 4 for the circumflex. So in this way, you can make quick shell of the guide diagnostic catheter to the ostium of the left vein. Sometimes, 
the right coronary, common uh, anomalous origin, it arises from the left coronary sinus. So here the Judkin's uh, right will not cannulate the coronary artery because it has arise from the left. So in this case, we need a other catheter. Mostly it can be fixed with a uh, multiple uh, with uh, uh, M plus catheter or sometimes multipurpose or sometimes tiger catheter you can hook the coronary artery, right coronary artery. Sometimes it also can uh, appear in the high up when ostium is located up instead of up from the lateral side. So here also the right catheter with a little curve at the tip will not fit coaxially. Here what you need to do take a uh, multipurpose catheter which will fit nicely coaxially with the right coronary. One thing you also need uh, to uh, know the if a patient has got a left coronary only, then there is no circumflex. You must think that the circumflex might have come from the right coronary. So after doing the left side, you need to cannulate the right coronary with the intention to see any anomalous origin of the circumflex, what happened in this case. The circumflex is arising from the right sinus, but different only. So here also you need to do little man manipulation selectively for the circumflex and also for the right coronary. So this way you can uh, uh, avoid uh, um, incomplete uh, angiogram. Unless you uh, identify the circumflex, the procedure is incomplete or incomplete. Sometimes uh, you may think that the vessel is diseased from the ostium. Once you uh, place the catheter at the ostium, there is a dumping, there is a hypotension, bradycardia. So in that case, you need to quick uh, engage and disengage. With a clockwise rotation, you engage it and anti-clockwise uh, disengage. By this way, you can avoid unnecessary ischemia for the uh, uh, right coronary artery. Window. Next question comes the injection of the dye. This is important in a sense. Say for example, this is a patient where coronary artery was huge, but you have taken five French catheter. So five French catheter may not give adequate dye to fill up the coronaries. Here you are seeing, but not uh, clearly about the lesion, the circumflex, and also distal area. So in that case, if you take a bigger lumen cell catheter, like if you take a six French catheter, it properly give adequate dye to visualize the coronary arteries. Another issue is you should take the cine for at least four to five second, five cardiac cycle. Here they have taken two and a half cycle. So you are not seeing properly, especially in a patient with a contralateral obstruction of the coronary artery, you must take the, uh, the uh, cine for at least four to five cardiac cycle to fill up the whole coronary artery and also, if necessary, the contralateral uh, collateral channel. Means that you should inject appropriate time Another mistake uh, many a time uh, initiate some complication, like this is a patient with uh, almost fused, totally obtruded RCA and LCA in a bypass graft vessel. You are seeing almost flushing the whole myocardium with the dye. And that's a dangerous thing in a way. In that happened in this patient, here you see, it, it initiated ventricular fibrillation. You see, the ventricular fibrillation started at the end, you see medical fibrillation. So means that if you forcefully inject, it can cause blushing of the whole myocardium and may lead to uh, uh, complication, malignant arrhythmia. Similarly, in a, in a, in a patient with a non-dominant vessel with a conal branch, if you do uh, injection of same amount of dye, then it also can initiate uh, arrhythmia like ventricular fibrillation. So be careful in injecting a non-dominant right coronary artery. 
And as I said, you need to have a prolonged exposure to see the collateral. This is a patient with a total occlusion LED. He's been retrogradely feeling by the RCA to his PDA and also coronal valves. Sometime, as the diagnostic catheter has got little backup support, so if you push too much, you see there will be back bouncing of the catheter and there will be more of sinus flush. Little dye will enter the coronary artery for proper visualization. So in that case, you need to give sustain and uniform pressure of injection so that the catheter will not bounce back. Uh, it, it usually happen in a, a dilated patient where the catheter is not properly coaxially placed. In that case, it happened. And, and in mostly in the radial, it, it is a, a regular phenomenon because the radial, the, the catheter is not stable like femoral approach. And this is the, that patient I've shown this, the, the, the deep engagement of the catheter can initiate many things, can cause spasm, and can initiate any dissection. If there is any blockage at the proximal, uh, then it can dissect the coronary artery. So be careful about too much pushing the catheter, because it's a pre-shaped catheter. You, if you push it too much, then it will engage deeply within the coronary artery. And if there is any atherosclerotic plague, proximally, every chance of a dissection of the coronary artery. And here happened at the coronary spasm, which was been relieved by intercoronary GTN. You see, this is that is the patient that I the study that I have told in early. After GTN, it looked like this. Now, uh, another topic is to take the cine in different projection for the same coronary artery. As you know, the coronary artery, the lesion is not always concentric. Sometimes it may be eccentrically placed. So if the beam does not enter perpendicularly, in one view, you'll see only the block is only 20%. In the other view, you'll see the 90%. So if you don't take the proper view, which is perpendicular to the lesion, you may miss this lesion. What happened in this patient? Uh, now, what is the common view? Uh, commonly, uh, we usually, if you consider uh, uh, the first AP view, the image intensifier in the uh, anterior and the X-ray from the posterior, on the left arm, if you take LAO cranial towards head, then down towards leg, the LAO caudal, then bring it to AP caudal, then bring it to right side, right caudal, and again up to the cranial, RAO cranial, and then AP cranial. And sometimes we need to see the lateral view of both the right or left, the right coronary artery, and also the distal LED. So this is a schematic diagram. This is the cranial, this is the head of the patient. Towards head is the cranial, towards leg is the caudal. And this is the leg, this is the right side, this is the left side. The oblique view is the towards the right side, it can go up to 90 degree, become left, uh, uh, right lateral. And if you take uh, on the left side, is the left lateral. And in between, maybe 30, 40, 50, whatever it is. Now, uh, the example of this uh, use of this multiple projection is that this is the patient which the angiogram done in one view you are not seeing the whole length of the LED you are seeing good view on the circumflex and also OM but the same patient if you take the caudal view you are seeing a lesion here the same patient if you take cranial view you are not seeing this lesion, but in the cranial, LO cranial vision with uh, uh, areo uh, angulation, areo cranial view, then you see there's a critical lesion here in the LED. So the same vessel of different angle, you can identify exactly what is the location and what the severity of the disease. And now, see here in the patient, you see, it looks like there is a diagonal osteal disease 
and it's a very big size vessel. So for planning to do angioplasty for this diagonal vessel with this view will be a mistake because if you go for angioplasty for this, it will compromise the LED. But if you take another view like this, you see, the diagonal is far away. Is the diagonal is far away from the origin. It is not ostial. It is a mid segment. So it's very easy to do angioplasty. So this is the importance of taking multiple view projection. Sometimes uh, it is uh, uh, many a time happen. Hooking the coronary artery, it selected it into the conal branch. And you may think that this is a non-dominant vessel. So you may finish it here, but it is a mistake because this patient, this patient has got a dominant circumference, dominant right coronal artery. That is the coronal branch. So you should exactly do angiogram to avoid uh, the selective coronal uh, injection. This is another view of uh, another uh, slide of the importance of the view of league view. This is the patient has taken shallow AP. The LED is not seen here. It looks like LED is blocked totally here. But if you take this view with a little cranial angulation on the right side, separating the diagonal and LED, you see LED is clear here. It is well visualized. It is not 100% blocked. So this is the importance of this is another view, circumflex, uh, the caudal view. So this is the importance of taking multiple view for the coronary arteries. There are some issue like the tortuosity of the vessel sometimes make a lot of trouble in diagnostic procedure, especially in elderly people, where torqueability of this diagnostic catheter is not one to one and very difficult to, uh, to manipulate the catheter at the ostium. In that case, you should take a long sheath of 23 centimeters. It will extend from the femoral artery up to the bifurcation to avoid this torture segment so that you can easily cannulate, easily manipulate the catheter wherever you want, clockwise or anticlockwise. This is especially in femoral approach with the tortuous coronary artery. Same thing can happen nowadays in the radial artery. Radial artery is a small caliber artery but it is very sensitive. If you do too much manipulation, it will go into spasm. So if you feel there is a resistance, immediately you should check it by a hand injection so that you will see what is the location, how it's going on. In that case, you may take a gliding wire or you may take a coronary wire. Like this is a coronary wire. You can, you can track this coronary wire through this and you can finish the job without much uh, manipulating the catheter uh, within the coronary artery, uh, within the uh, radial artery. Sometime, uh, while you have gone up to the subclavian, here the regular wall may not cross. If you do too much of manipulation, the same thing will happen, the radial artery will go to a spasm. It, you can easily avoid it by taking a gliding catheter, gliding wire, like a terimo it will smoothly cross the, that obstruction, not really obstruction, it's the angulation and calcif calcification. So it smoothly cross that obstructed area, uh, resistant area, and you can uh, take the catheter over the wire. Sometimes it happens if you approach it from the left side, especially in unfolded or, or, uh, or uh, anorectic aortic aneurysm uh, as, uh, ascending or the dilatation. In that case, what you need to do, you can ask the patient to take a deep breath. Once a deep breath, then the unfolding, or it will be a little bit full, and the catheter and the wire can cross within, uh, uh, instead of descending aorta, into the ascending aorta. And thereafter, you can drag the catheter over the wire. Uh, one interesting uh, segment, actually, I want to uh, show to you that. Nowadays, 
we don't need to do LV graphy. But LV graphy, also you need to know. There is a technique. Yes, a, your technician can do procedure because all these are pre-shaped catheters. But the technician does it blindly. But you are the, doing it with knowing the technique. So this is one of the technique that you can avoid unnecessary manipulation of catheter to enter the LV through the aortic valve, especially in, in, in patient with the sclerotic aortic valve where there's a difficulty. Here, this one technique is the first, take the wire, the floppy part will enter the across the valve easily. And once the floppy part enters, then over the wire, you take the uh, uh, catheter over the wire to the uh, uh, LV crossing the aortic valve. This is another technique. You just wire was that the tip slowly pull the wire and push the catheter, make a U shape. Once you make a U shape, then push the wire up to the tip. And once it is up to the tip, then all together pull a little bit. And it is unfolded slowly when it cross, it prolapses into the LV. And you can uh, you can do it repeatedly the same uh, uh, way. Uh, is not that it has gone accidentally. It is the technique to cross the aortic valve uh, 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 in a patient with uh, sometime in the aortic sclerosis. Although we don't need to do it nowadays because of the echocardiographic benefit. Here also I'm saying this, don't do it half-hearted. This is the half-hearted job. This is the half-hearted job in a sense. Okay, angiogram done, although coming out, let us see the renal artery. But it was not been done properly. If you want to do it, do it properly. Do it selectively right, then left, not like this. Means that wholehearted. Because you may not do this procedure second time. If the patient next time come with a hypertension, and if you feel that could be because of renal artery stenosis, with this angiogram, you may not give any opinion, but if you've done it properly, definitely you can explain, no, this is not because of renal artery stenosis. This is, is the essential hypertension. Now, uh, nowadays we are coming with a lot of patient with uh, uh, post bypass angiogram. anatomical identification of the blockage. In general, before doing angiogram to the graft vessel, you must know the surgical report of that patient where the where was the graft been done. It is written in all surgical notes, the Lima to LAD, Sepanas Venus graft to PDA, OAM, PDA, OLBD. Detail is there. So you must know three graft or four graft before entering into the cat lab. Don't go blindly to see where it is, because you may not exactly hook the graft vessel easily as like a native vessel. So it is better to do a root autography non-selectively to visualize the overall uh, uh, the graft, because this dye will enter selectively to the graft, and you can identify or gaze and take a selective catheter to cannulate the graft vessel. For example, in Lima, the best you can do it with the RNO view and the common catheter used with RCA catheter or IMA catheter. Because these two catheter coaxially fit with the uh, uh, internal memory artery. But distal anastomosis of the LED is the best view of the epicranial or lateral view. So you must take this to be in patient post CABG to see the anastomotic sign. This is the place many a time you need to a special attention to see the anastomotic osteosis. Unless you perpendicularly direct the beam, you may not identify the osteal stenosis, distal anastomotic stenosis. For PDA graft, usually all the graft in the uh, venous graft is taken from the anterior surface of the aorta. For the right sided, it is little bit on the right and for the li left sided like OAM, RAM, left side of the anterior surface of the aorta. And for the view, 
the earth's light coronary uh, visual resolution is done by LAO view projection and for OM LED diagonal graphic based scene by RAO projection. There are some common mistake after doing angiogram. We sometimes say, oh, oh, it is a mistake I have done. It was better to do this view and that view. So before leaving the cat lab, you must review the, all the vine, cine view in the cat lab. Before inadequate visualization of the point of interest, you have us seen maybe LED view is not adequate, maybe circumflex is not being seen properly, you need a little, little bit angulation. Commonly, you should identify this thing detail before leaving the cat lab after the move. And also, you make sure he don't need any further view, then you should leave the cat lab. Leave the uh, cat lab. You can uh, review it again in the control. In general, some percentages we used to know of, uh, used to say about uh, severity of the lesion in terms of the percentage. This is uh, something to, to, to uh, identify or grade the severity of the disease. Like there is no blockage, means normal. There is minimum, minimal uh, disease if it is less than 25%. If it is uh, 25 to 49%, we call it mild disease. If it is 49 to 69, it is a moderate disease. And if it is more than 70, it is severe disease. And if it is more than 100%, it is gone. Any block is more than 70%, we call severe because it interferes the normal flow dynamics and it, it can produce a symptom. It can, it needs uh, to be handled. But all blockages are equally important. Even mild case, mild disease is also disease. Today it is mild. Tomorrow it can be severe. So this is also important. The blocker more aggressive to be on nitrate. So these are the percentages usually we say about the severity of the disease. Sometimes we 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 see that the patient uh, the, after a lot of struggle we are not seeing properly because the patient is too much obese. The coronary flow is very high, especially in anemia or very tachy. and also. Uh, with the large uh, with the angulation can reduce the uh, visualization. So solution is to take a larger catheter lumen and also uh, give vigorous injection and sometimes next to increase the KV of the uh, extra beam. Now a little bit about the complication of the angiogram. It is important is not like taking two cc blood and test it and if uh, it is uh, uh, the report is not uh, uh, um, helpful take another two cc not like that that's why it, the angiogram is uh, uh, a test that needs to be the patient within the hospital it is something like a minimum type of surgical uh, procedure type preparation of the patient and you need all possible measure to alleviate the complication, to tackle the complication. So you must know the complication so that if you know the complication, you can manage it properly in time. The major complication is uh, a death, myocardial infarction, cerebrovascular accident, arrhythmia, especially uh, minor or maybe malignant arrhythmia, vascular complication, although it is nowadays is less because of suicide, from femoral to radial, related uh, nephropathy or allergic re reaction. There may be hemodynamic complication of hypotension or um, uh, hypertension. There may be a rapture or perforation of the vessel or even cardiac chamber or, or even coronary arteries. There are some minor complications like air embolism, uh, especially uh, in an elderly patient with atherosclerotic uh, embolization of the cholesterol 
both in the coronary and also the cerebral. There may be lactic acidosis, especially in the diabetic patient who are on metformin. There is a chances of infection. So these are although very rare. But in general, one of the study uh, done on 60,000 patients, uh, all are very, very low. Like mortality is only 0.1%. Micro infarction 0.05%, cerebral accident 0.07%, arrhythmia 0.38%, vascular complication 0.4%. Nowadays it is less than this. Contrast reaction 0.3%, hemodynamic complication less than uh, uh, 0.2%. So these are patients. But even if it happened to one person, patient, it is 100% for him. So you must be very careful in doing the procedure. And also, here is also the importance of counseling. If you counsel the patient about the complication, and if anything happened, at least you will not face the trouble given by the patient attendance. So there are some complications uh, related to multifactor, like increased medical risk, increased cardiac risk, increase in vascular risk, and also increase the debt. So what are the uh, risk in medical condition, like more than age 70 years, this is a morbid obesity, this is a cachectic patient, uncontrolled diabetes, desaturated patient, severe COPD, renal insufficiency. These are the medical conditions that increase the risk of complication. Similarly, the cardiac issue itself can, re can cause a lot of complications, like a patient with a triple vessel disease, left main disease, critical left main disease, and this is a functional class 4, or significant mitral or aortic valve disease, or in prosthetic valve, ejection fraction less than 30%, as treadmill, uh, like hypotension or severe ischemia, patient with pulmonary hypertension, and page, voice pressure uh, more than 25, especially in uh, poor LV function or mitral limitation. These are the patients that have the increased risk of uh, complication. And vascular risk is that maybe uh, bleeding diathesis. There may be patient. There may be uncontrolled. All this can lead to complication like bleeding, hematoma, pseudo aneurysm, a lot many things related to angiogram. And there is a risk of death. Although it is very less, but usually if it is more than 70 years, female preponderance, patient with class 4 heart failure has got 10 to. Is more chance of death than compared to single vessel disease. Ejection fraction less than 30 has got 10 times more chance of complication than normal. Similarly, vulvar heart disease and severe non cardiac uh, situation like uh, uncontrolled diabetes. So, uh, in nutshell, uh, um, the take home message is that don't be hurry, check the vitals site and assess the puncture site at the maximum palpable pulse to avoid multiple attempts and inevitable complication. Choose appropriate catheter from the XA field, proper injection, appropriate amount of dye with sustained pressure in a time. Take multiple view, delineate the size, extent, and severity of the disease, and always keep in the monitor to see the ECG and pressure. With this view, thank you very much, all of you who have patient hearing.